Hi friends, it's Mickey here with your singing tip of the week. Today is apparently National Croissant Day and, or croissant, I don't know how to pronounce that. And I went to Starbucks and they upsold me. <laughs> I went in there to get a latte because my coffee machine is broken and they were like, hey, it's National Croissant Day. Do you wanna buy a croissant? And I hadn't had caffeine yet. So I was like, yeah, whatever. And they sold me like a $7 croissant that I didn't really want. But <laughs> the coffee was really good and I'm feeling excited because today I wanna to talk to you about something that is a struggle that was very personal to me. When you are singing a song that has belting in the top of your chest voice range and you don't know how to effectively use your voice so that you're not screaming those notes and really fatiguing your voice by the end of the song and how to kind of handle that. Most untrained singers are going to try to belt as high as they can in their chest voice range because they know that when they flip into their head voice range, their voice is gonna sound a lot softer and weaker because it takes a long time to develop a strong head voice. I've had some students that come in that are very young and they haven't taken vocal lessons before and they've somehow won the lottery and learned how to navigate that and sing really well in their head voice range and not have a problem going from one to the other. But I think for most people, it's a challenge. And this was definitely true for me. I spent many years as a singer before I took any singing lessons. And I just assumed that because I have a low voice, because I'm an alto, I could only belt so high. And then I would have to flip into this very, very soft voice. And I thought, well, the people that are belting higher and singing these songs that have these crazy high belted notes just have a higher voice than me. You know, sopranos can belt higher because they have a higher voice. And yes, it's true, but the difference in how much of a chest belt range you have between a soprano and an alto is really not that much. And so when people are belting these crazy high notes, they're actually using a very connected head voice, a very strong, clear head voice that sounds so similar to their chest voice that to the untrained person, you think that they're just belting really, really high up. So what I did for years and years and years is when I had a song that was really high in my vocal range and the belting notes were really high, I would push my chest voice and try to strain and belt them in my chest voice. And that is like a Herculean, Sisyphean, task like you're rolling a boulder up the hill because you're really trying to muscle your way up there so as you get high up in your chest voice range if you're pushing higher and higher and trying to scream those notes and keep them really connected it's going to do damage to your voice so i'll give you an example when i was in college i was in an acapella group called women rhythm and one of the songs that i sang as a solo was cole porter so in love and it starts very low, so it's very comfortable in my vocal range. And I would always start it like as low as possible. So it goes, strange dear, but true dear, when I'm close to you, dear, the stars fill the sky, so in love with you am I. And then it gets to the middle section and there's some high belted notes. And I remember always being like, oh my God, the notes are like in the top of my belted range. And I would always go for them, but I was always afraid that my voice was gonna crack or one day I wouldn't be able to hit them. It goes, in love with the night mysterious, that night when you first were there. In love with my joy delirious, when I knew that you could care. So that joy delirious is pretty high in my belted range. I think I'm singing it lower than it actually is. But um, just to show you that there's two different ways that you can approach those high notes. You can either really just go for it. And when, you, when you're in your chest voice, you're feeling so connected. It's like you're this big tree and your feet are the roots going down into the earth and your breath support is really connected and it feels like your pelvis and your column of breath and everything are connected right to your mouth. Everything is oh, very, very connected. And if you use that same technique when you get to those high notes, you're really like trying to do weightlifting with the little muscles in your throat and you're just pushing through it. You're trying to muscle through it, right? In love with my joy, delirious joy. 
and your throat starts to close up, your larynx comes up, everything gets really tense, and it sounds like you're screaming, it sounds really strangled. And you're damaging your voice and you're also running into the problem that you might completely just, you know, crack or, or lose your voice and give a really embarrassing, bad performance. And all of the fear that's connected with being in that physical state is gonna affect your performance. So the proper way to sing a high note in your chest voice range is to start releasing, letting go of that chest voice technique and transitioning into your head voice technique. And you want to almost just release some of the connectedness. So you release a little bit of that lock on your breath column. And when I, when I push my voice really high, it almost feels like it's trapped in the bottom part of my face. Like I have a bar, a metal plate <laughs> that goes through my face and my voice is trapped under it. And there's like a little space over here, a little corridor. And the idea is to let the voice go through this corridor and come up in your face. And you'll feel the resonance, the vibration moving from down here to higher in your face, traveling up. In love with my joy. So now I feel it vibrating up here. Joy delirious. Instead of joy delirious. So when I'm, when I'm pushing, joy, I feel it down here. Joy is up here. So you actually want to feel the vibration going up. So let's do a couple of vocal warm-ups to help you get into the feeling of using your head voice and your chest voice, those two different techniques, those two different gears. So I wanna start with one of my favorite chest voice belt exercises. We're gonna sing on hey on a minor chord, and we're gonna sing one, three, five, four, three, four, three, one, like this. Hey, hey, hey. And I want you to really be connected and take it as high as you can. Muscle it as high as you can so you can feel what it feels like to grip and to really have to weight lift to get your voice up there. Okay? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Super connected. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. to travel up. Keep it down here. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. So you can hear I'm now hitting that ceiling. I'm hitting the very top of my chest voice belt. So I could keep going, but I'm probably going to hurt myself, right? chest voice but I can feel all the fatigue so if I were to sing a song like that I would blow my voice right so if I'm singing a song and I know that there's a high note that's right in the top of my chest voice range I have to make a decision am I gonna go for it with my full connected chest voice because it's gonna sound really powerful and strong or am I gonna transition into a mixed voice which is gonna sound a little bit weaker and the timbre is gonna be a little bit different? And I think it's a consideration that you have to think about. So if you have one climactic note that's held out in a song and you know that that's the only point where you're gonna go that high, you might wanna do it in your chest voice. Let's say you're singing She Used to Be Mine from the musical Waitress, the Sarah Brella song. There's like a couple of notes in there that are very high that are at the climax of the song. And emotionally, you might wanna really go there and punch those so that it sounds really impressive. But if you have another song where you have repeated every single chorus, you're singing a note that's right in the top of your chest belt range, I wouldn't do that on your full out chest voice the entire time because you're gonna fatigue your voice. And then let's say at the end you have a diminuendo and you wanna be really quiet and intimate, you're not gonna have any voice left to go there. You're gonna have to really keep pushing the entire way. You're gonna cause a lot of strain and fatigue and you're just gonna blow your voice out. Same thing when you're thinking about a set of music. If you're singing one song at a talent competition and you know that you have that one high note and you wanna belt it and blow people away, 
that's okay, but that's very different than if you're singing an hour of music and you front load it with these really difficult belting songs that you're gonna be going all out and then you're gonna have no voice for the rest of the set. So you have to really be cognizant of these things and anytime you pick a song, you wanna know, this is within this range and it has this part within my chest registration, it has this part within my head registration, I'm gonna belt these notes so I know exactly where I'm using my chest voice technique and where I'm gonna transition into my mixed voice into my head voice. So now let's do an exercise where you're gonna start in your chest voice and you're gonna keep going higher and you're gonna transition into your mixed voice and then your head voice. We're gonna say hey seven times, each one a little bit higher, and you're gonna start in your chest voice and then you're gonna start to pull back a little bit and mix in your head voice. And each time I want you to try to maintain the same intensity, okay? Hey, hey, hey. Was that seven? That might have been six. But you can hear that I've successfully traversed my bridge and I've gone into my head voice and it still sounds very, very loud and intense, okay? So now let's try saying man. We're gonna say man very forcefully. We're gonna hold out a sustained note and we're gonna see if we can use our mixed voice and see how it feels. So don't go too hard, don't scream it. So we're just gonna go, let's start here. Man. So that's in the very top of my belt voice range. It's even right on my bridge. And I know that I'm doing it correctly because it sounds very loud and intense, but I'm not coughing, my voice is not cracking. I'm not going <coughs> If you feel like your voice is getting raspy or you need to cough, you're going too hard. So now we're gonna do another exercise and we're gonna start above your break in your head voice, okay? We're gonna go and you're gonna to try to use your most connected head voice. And the reason that we're doing ma, ma, ma is because it's actually really hard to push into your chest voice on that consonant. It back stops and pushes some of the air back and makes you kind of sit in that head voice range. So we could even start it lower. Let's start below our bridge, so. to feel on this exercise is how the resonance is actually coming up in your face. So when I'm singing that, even without you, the stars fold about you, you know, darling, why so in love with you am I? I want you to feel that that sound is moving up. So you know, darling, So even this, so in, you, you can do it, so, or so in love with you am I. You have to allow that residence to come up, right? Start to feel the different sensations. Start to feel that grip release and allow the sound to come up through that corridor and move into the top part of your face so that you're singing up here rather than right? <laughs> which sounds terrible, my God. My, my neighbors are gonna be calling the police after this video. And you can hear in my voice that it's getting very scratchy because I've really been pushing and trying to muscle that voice up using those tiny little muscles in my neck. So we don't wanna be doing that. It causes a lot of fatigue. It can ultimately cause long-term damage to your vocal cords. And I just want you to be very cognizant as you're singing those high notes that you need to release the grip of your chest voice and allow the sound to rise, allow that different gear to take over. And in the beginning, it may seem much 
softer and more disconnected in your head voice, but then you can work on developing, having a stronger, more connected head voice, creating that really convincing false belt where people are not gonna be able to tell where you're transitioning from one to the other. So hopefully this was instructive. If you have any questions on this topic, obviously drop them in the comments below. I read all of my comments and I answer any questions that you guys put below, so don't think that I'm not going to read it. And also, I would love to hear your stories about what kind of physical sensations you experience in your body when you transition from your chest voice registration to your head voice registration. So please let me know how that goes for you. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you here next week for another singing tip. Until then, happy singing.